Thanks for tuning in to the fourth part of my video series on making these cherry writing desks. Today, for me, is probably the most exciting part of the process that I've done yet, and that's doing the inlays on top of the desks. I've decided that I'm going to do all these inlays in curly maple. I agree that's a good idea. The customer that wants this agrees that that is going to be a good idea. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm utilizing a piece of machinery today that is becoming more and more common with a lot of woodworkers out there and that's the CNC machine. Little promo for this, this is a Laguna Swift. It's a 4x4 model CNC. Uh, it does not have an automatic tool changer or anything like that. Uh, not a big deal to me because uh, I'm not in super high production. I don't need the machine to change for me automatically. Um, I've already went ahead and done all the programming on this. Um, so basically the video is going to show two things. First it's going to show me cutting out all of the channels for the inlay which is going to be on top of this uh, piece of cherry right here and then it's going to show me making all of the curly maple inlay pieces that I'm going to set into those channels. So hope you enjoy the video. There is more coming so stay tuned if you like what you're seeing here today. Well, you can see that I've got all the inlays cut out now. What I did with this is I cut it all out of one piece as you could see on the machine there. And I cut it with these little tiny tabs on it so that it could all remain in one piece in case you were wondering how come it didn't go just flying off when it was cutting. That's why it had little tiny tabs on the back that held it on. And then I can pretty much just take the pieces apart and fit them in there only it never works that well. I could make the tolerances wider which would create a bigger gap in the inlay um, and sort of experiment with that until I got it just perfect but it's very very close. So now what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna take a few a few uh, tools of the trade here with inlay work. I got a very small chisel that I can go and slowly work any areas away uh, that need to be more significantly taken off I got a few small files. Uh, these work very well just for removing very, very minute amounts of material. And I'll just keep working on it uh, until it fits in there just perfect. It's very close already, so just a couple little adjustments here and there, and we'll be on the right track. Well, it's getting late here. Uh, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to work on this maybe a little bit more. For you, it'll be just a second. For me, it'll be several hours. So, we'll see you in one second. I don't think it'd be fair to do a video on inlay without actually showing a couple of the different tools that you can use to make inlays if you've never done it before. I'm aware that I have a machine that most people do not have and so when you see stuff like that you say well there's no real skill involved in it, it's all in the program. And that's very much right. Uh, with a CNC machine when it comes to making stuff it's whoever is the best programmer wins. 
and that's just the truth about using a CNC machine. Now my personal belief in regards to woodworking uh, stems from more traditional values, believe it or not. Um, I believe that you have to have really good and proper hand techniques and learn how to use hand tools before you delve into a lot of the other stuff. I know it's just a woodworking theory. Uh, different people believe different things about how you have to sort of earn your keep as a woodworker. I just personally believe that it's best if you know how to use uh, certain basic tools before you begin to use other things. Let me show you two of the tools that I've used in the past that work very effectively for me. The first tool is this saw right here. Uh, now I call this a jewelry cutter saw because that's probably the more appropriate term for it. And it, you can put very, very fine blades in here. Um, really whatever blades you can find that works best. I find the finer tooth, the better the cut, as usual. And what you can do with this is you can, I'm going to get closer to the camera here. You pretty much just go in and you can make cuts like this. It does take a significant amount of time to cut with one of these if you're new to it. Now once you get experienced and you start to get the motion, you sort of learn the feel of when the teeth are going to grab uh, and when you can make turns and when you can't, it's a pretty effective and quick process, especially if you were to go on a computer and try to draw out one of these birds uh, just with lines and whatnot and then try to cut it. It would take more time programming probably than just grabbing the, the this and going to cut at it. Now there is a more modern adaptation uh, than this and that is of course the good old-fashioned scroll saw varying brands um, some are better than others I have this Delta here that I bought from a good friend and uh, this works great <laughs> uh, there's a DeWalt one that's made it's the exact same thing pretty much as this one is and then there's also an Excalibur brand that I know of that is supposed to be the top of the line I've never used an Excalibur um, this works just fine for me and actually all the birds that you see cut out on here I cut out on this scroll saw so it's worked very well for me and scroll saws are relatively cheap as far as power tools go so if you see yourself uh, cutting a lot of that or if you already have one and you've never considered doing inlay work with it uh, it is a great tool to use for that I'll show you here real quick this is a bowl that I did that on get a little closer and as you can see there's the birds that are inlaid around this outside of this bowl. Still working on the finishing there a little bit. All different birds all the way around. So that's kind of a neat little detail you can do with your projects. Now here's the thing. It doesn't really matter what tools you're going to use when you do your inlay. If you use the hand saw or use a scroll saw or use a CNC machine or whatever you use, the most important thing is accuracy. No one likes to see inlays with big old gaps that you have to fill and then you see all the fill around all of the inlays. It looks bad. So do the best job that you can with it is my personal goal to get as close to tolerance as possible. And as long as you do that, the project's going to turn out fine. Now let's go back to a project I'm working on now and I'm just going to show you how quick the inlays will go into this desk. Here are some corner pieces that I cut to go inside of the outside of this writing desk and I'll see if I can zoom this in here you can see hopefully some little tabs that are cut behind these pieces when you cut these on the machine they're just too small to hold down on the table and I don't really like using double sticky tape I'm not a big fan of it it creates more problems than anything so I do these little tiny tabs on the back and that allows me to pop those out and just sand them off real quick so all I have to do Take my chisel, break these tabs off real quick. There's one right there. Just going to sand those tabs off. It's also going to clean up the edge and help it lay down into the inlay channel a little bit easier. Now we're going to do a little test here. And I'd say that fits pretty perfect. Now all I have to do is go all the way around this entire border and I'll have another desk that's inlaid and ready to go.
Well, there you have it. This is actually three writing desks that I've been working on, and I finally have all the inlays done in all of them. So, some of it I've already leveled out a little bit, like this one right here. Um, the rest of these i got to go and knock the inlays down, sand them down, get everything nice and smooth, and then I'll be ready to finish them up. So, stay tuned for more videos. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope it gave some information that is useful. If not, that's alright. Glad you watched anyhow. I have more videos coming in the future, so just hang tight if you like what you're seeing. Uh, I have all kinds of other stuff that I do. I also do sawmilling. Uh, if you check out my channel, you'll see some of the sawmill videos, and uh, you'll kind of see where this wood came from. All the lumber that I use in these projects comes from customers. I go on site, I saw their logs for them, we dry it, and then I use the lumber to make heirloom quality furniture for them. This is such a fun process every time that I do it. It never seems to get old, and I'm just deciding to record this one to show you a little bit uh, how I work in my workshop. Stay tuned for more videos, they'll be coming soon. Please subscribe if you are feeling so inclined. It's been a pleasure having you watch my video. Have a good day.